Hi hey Mark uh, and the board if you get to see this uh, small video clip. Uh, I'm using a bit of different technology this time so hopefully it will work. Uh, the, you've had a pretty tough year and um, a business performance review that um, hopefully is, uh, you're looking at at the same time as you're playing this video uh, pretty well tells the story. Uh, we've lost um, $107,000 uh, mainly due to a fall in gaming revenue of $162,000, which you must remember the gaming revenue is pretty well pure profit. So uh, it's, uh, it's had its effect. What, what concerns me uh, normally uh, is, the, is the cash flow of this particular business. Uh, with such a terrible trading year, our uh, cash for distribution was $47,792, uh, but we gave away $82,000 to the clubs. How did we do that? Uh, we basically had a net profit in cash of $10,000, we raised um, an extra loan of $36,000, and we lowered our bank balance of another $36,000. So Mark's been uh, doing a fair bit of a juggling job here and uh, he's done a fantastic um, effort, I believe. The business performance review has um, uh, some areas in it that really need uh, your attention and, and that's the current ratio. The current ratio has dropped below one. It's actually at 0 0.41 at the moment. And what that, that means is that your current liabilities are more than your current assets which some would say could be technically insolvent uh, we don't think so at the moment but it puts a huge strain on the business and for the next 12 months the theme has to be building up cash balance and and that meant to build up cash balance is both reducing expenses and increasing income. It's interesting to note that with the reconfiguration of your business, and with that I'm really referring to the um, bringing the bistro in it as a main a source of revenue for you, uh, it's interesting to note that the gross profit dropping to about 52%, uh, for every dollar that you give away, you have to sell two dollars worth of goods and services to cover that one dollar you give away. So I'd just like you to keep that in mind uh, when you're doing these things. Uh, we can see by the uh, uh, business performance review, particularly when I go into the solvency areas, that our debt is um, strangling us uh, and that now our um, finance costs uh, as a percentage to net profit before interest and tax is, is 91 percent. <clears throat> However, enough of that uh, gloom and doom because you, you are aware of it, you're doing things about it and I'd like to support you in the strategic direction you're going in. So that leads to me to the future and I want to give you a little bit of an, uh, an insight of what's happening out there uh, in the future uh, and where I believe the Children's Sports Club is in a wonderful position to be able to capitalise on this. The business in general, and certainly the Children's Sports Club now, is not just a, a building that people go in and spend money. It's a business that its customers, whether they be uh, members, whether they be football or sports people, whether they be passers-by, uh, whoever they are, can now access and get the excitement of the Children's and Sports and Club in the comfort of their own home. They no longer have to go to the establishment. And you might say, yes Ian, but, but we want people to come to our, our uh, premises. And that's true. But by utilising the technologies available to you now, when those people do go out their front door, you want them to immediately think of the Children's and Sportsman's Club. All right, in my report, which has all this sort of stuff in it, uh, 
I'm going to sort of zero in on something that's really of concern to me. And that's what the government is doing. In 1984, the government did something very clever. It brought in Part 4A of the Income Tax Act. And for the very first time ever, the legislation and the wording of the legislation was not what really was of importance. They brought in this thing called the spirit of the legislation. And I believe that's what they're doing with gambling. In 1984, they made it socially unacceptable to avoid paying income tax. And you might recall, um, we used to go, for people that are my age, we used to go to parties and business functions, and we would brag about how we'd ripped off the tax office. After 1984, it all sort of went underground, it all sort of went quiet. And I believe that's what's happening with gambling, is the government is making it socially unacceptable to gamble. You only have to look at TV and see the, the ads for um, helplines for gambling and drinking. Gambling and drinking have been the lifeline of the revenue of this club in the past. There's a change out there. And I think you'll just see this continuing trend by the government to make it socially unacceptable. There's something else that's happening out there and that's been happening for a year or two, or three or four, but it's the social pressure being put on businesses to contribute to society or give back what they may have taken. It's called ethical spending or ethical business. And the two of the sportsmen's clubs in an ideal position to capitalise on this, to be able to get the dollars being given out by business to show that they're doing something, some sort of social responsibility. The, there is some change differences though, and it's important to note that these businesses aren't giving money and supporting uh, charities for the hell of it. They're doing it because society is saying they have to. How often do you see slogans like, you know, buy this hamburger and uh, for every dollar, uh, sorry, every hamburger you buy, a, a dollar goes off to some sort of charity. We want the Tour and Sportsman's Club to be that charity. The trick is that businesses that do these things want to be able to see where their money's going and be able to show people that they're doing a great job. So when you start looking at a target market to get increased sponsorship, you have to be able to uh, allow the sponsor to see the benefit and show his customers the benefit. And finally, I want to talk about social media. And you've all heard about Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and uh, uh, who knows what, blogs and all sorts of stuff. What's it all about? It's all about bringing your business into the homes of your customers. It's making the Tourid and Sportsman's Club the center of the universe. And you may laugh at that. When I developed my own franchised uh, audit business, day one I set it up to make it the best in the world. It doesn't have to be the best in the world, but once you get that mindset, you'll be doing so many little things that makes you different from anybody else. Set up your Facebook, set up Twitter, um, make your customers feel special. It doesn't cost a lot of money to do that. In fact, it costs very little money to do that. But by making the Turidan Sportsman's Club the social centre of at least Turidan, if not more, uh, you will benefit uh, hugely in, in the long term. Short term, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. Building up cash reserves is critical to your long term survival. But long term, it's the way you are perceived, perceived in the community that's going to be important. And um, there's no other business in your area that can do it better. 
uh, I mentioned in my report about a little, um, a little tiny, tiny little shop uh, in in the mall in Hobart that uh, sells cupcakes. The lady that has that shop, by using Facebook, had two thousand loyal friends on Facebook. She sold something new to her members every week. She ended up with 1% of the entire Hobart population as friends on her Facebook. Imagine if the Children's Sports Club had 1% of, of Melbourne or 1% or of Danny Knob. What a difference it would make to your bottom line. So with these few words, I hope that you will read the, the report um, and, and start debating and thinking what you can do. Uh, I talk about um, Peter Drucker, probably the greatest uh, business guru in the Western world ever, and what he said in his book, uh, The Definitive Drucker, and there's a, um, uh, that's what the book looks like. Um, you don't have to read all the other gurus. As some of you know, I do book reviews and I've read hundreds of the things. This book says it all. So, um, firstly, it's been a tough year. You are in, uh, in a fairly difficult position, but I have to congratulate you all that you're going in the right direction. Just expand the horizon to think, how would we look? How, what would we do if we were in every house in the world? Uh, so thank you for looking at this video and um, I look forward to following uh, you, your progress.